The atmosphere is changing now For the Spirit of the Lord is here The evidence is all around That the Spirit of the Lord is here the atmosphere is changing now For the Spirit of the Lord is here The evidence is all around That the Spirit of the Lord is here Overflow in this place Fill our hearts with your love Your love surrounds us You're the reason we came To encounter your love Your love surrounds us Glory, glory, glory to God Almighty. Good morning, good morning, kingdom citizens. How are you all doing this morning? Another glorious, glorious Wednesday morning. We are at Wednesday. We made it through the middle of the week. Amen. Glory to God. So good morning, good morning, kingdom citizens. This is a year in the Bible, a daily Bible reading, where we are getting through the Bible in one entire year. We are in Ezekiel 19 and 20, and then Hebrews 11, verses 1 through 22. Amen. All right, so I hope that y'all woke up with a praise and worship on your heart, mind, and soul for the Lord, that you're ready to conquer and be victorious in this day amen all right so let's pray heavenly father jehovah god creator of heaven and earth we come to you in the name of the lord jesus christ we thank you and glorify you lord god almighty that you woke us up once again another glorious wonderful day that you have made that you have breathed breath into our lungs once again lord god thank you for covering us in the blood of christ Thank you for the salvation. Thank you for the sacrifices and the intercessions that you make on our behalf every single day, Lord God. I pray that as you disperse assignments, Lord Jesus, amongst the people of God, I pray that as you position us and that you are preparing us and getting us ready um, to send us out and release us, I pray that we that you pour a patience in us for you, Lord God. That as we hear the assignments and we hear the instructions and we hear the directions, that we continue to just wait on you, Lord, to know when and where and how and what to do exactly, how you want it done, how you want things done. Give us the patience for you, Lord God, to wait upon you, and not take things into our own hands, Lord God. We want to be about your will, your purpose, your plan for our lives, Lord Jesus. So as we hear you, Lord, give us the patience in us for you so we don't take things in our own hands, Lord God. And you pressed upon my spirit, Lord Jesus, and I'm praying that you you show us, show us how to be patient. Show us how to wait on you, Lord God, and give us the increase and in the knowledge and the wisdom and the understanding um, to know how to wait on you, Lord Jesus. And I thank you and glorify you for your healing hands, your healing power, your healing spirit, Lord God.
I thank you that you are visiting our homes, that you are sitting amongst us, sitting at our tables, eating with us. Lord God, you are working on our behalf, making ways out of no way. And I glorify you and thank you, Lord God Almighty, for everything that you are and everything that you are doing in our lives, Lord Jesus. And we just pray this in the presence of Jehovah and the spirit of Jesus, Yahweh, in Jesus' holy, mighty name. Amen. 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 Yeah, the spirit of the Lord pressing upon me, you know, he's he's dispersing assignments. But there are some of us. And I'm I may I may be guilty of it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but we are we we are we're getting so excited that that we're coming up with our own ideas and as soon as we hear the assignment we're coming up with all these ideas and things and 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 we're not waiting we're not we're not just sitting still he's he's passing the assignments out but but just sit still and relax he'll he'll tell you what to do each step He's going to prepare you. He's going to let you know where the resources are coming from. He's going to he's going to let you know how to do it. Uh, so so right now, right now, get in writing mode. You got some ideas and things like that. Just write it down. Don't go out there and try to gung ho and do it on your own. Do it. Do it all. You know, you, you take the assignment and then you run. No, sit still. You know, and I had and I had to I had to uh, analyze myself as I'm I'm seeing this in the spirit. And so I said, OK, Lord, I'm going I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. And so just write the ideas down. And, and I heard I heard in the spirit it says, be patient, children of God, kingdom of citizens, be patient. You know, you're about to do some mighty, mighty things in the land of the world. OK. But be patient on the Lord. He's 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 giving the assignments out. He's passing them out. And uh, just whatever ideas that start flowing through your brain, just write them down, write them on a piece of paper and then and then just wait for the voice of the Lord, you know, to, to tell you to guide you and direct you on what to do each step. That way, that way you are still in his will, you know, at each moment, at each time. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. All right. So let's go to Ezekiel 19. Ezekiel 19. Uh... I'm so glad my Bible have tabs. I have these uh, tabs to let me know <laughs> where the books are because I would be like stumbling through pages. All right, so Ezekiel 19 and 20 this morning. Do remember that I read from the King James Version. I, I just always have loved the King James Version. And uh, but if you're reading from a different version, that is OK. Just know the wordings will be different. All right. Ezekiel 19. <coughs> says, moreover, take thou up a lamentation for the prince of Israel. And say, what is thy mother? A lioness, she lay down among lions. She nourished her whelps among young lions. And she brought up one of her whelps. It became a young lion and it learned to catch the prey. It devoured men. The nations also heard of him. He was taken in their pit. And they brought him with chains unto the land of Egypt. Now, when she saw that she had waited and her hope was lost, then she took another of her whelps 
and made him a young lion. And he went up and down among the lions. He became a young lion and learned to catch the prey and devour men. And he knew their desolate palaces and he laid waste their cities and the land was desolate and the fullness thereof by the noise of his roaring. Then the nations set against him on every side from the provinces and spread their net over him. He was taken in their pit. And they put him in ward and chains and brought him to the king of Babylon. They brought him into holes that his voice should no more be heard upon the mountains of Israel. Thy mother is like a vine in thy blood planted by the waters. She was fruitful and full of branches by reason of many waters. And she had strong rods for the sceptres of them that bear rule. And her stature was exalted among the thick branches. And she appeared in her height with the multitude of her branches. But she was plucked up in fury. She was cast down to the ground. And the east wind dried up her fruit. Her strong rods were broken and withered. The fire consumed them, and now she is planted in the wilderness in a dry and thirsty ground. And fire is gone out of a rod of her branches, which hath devoured her fruit, so that she hath no strong rod to be a sceptre to rule. This is a lamentation, and shall be for a lamentation. Okay, so I'm going to read some of the commentary. The commentary says, Sad songs of the type found in chapter 19 are known in Hebrew by the name Kena, which means funeral dirge or funerary lamentation. So I guess this is a song that they sung. Says they have a unique meter and their content is similar to modern eulogies. The switch of subjects from Ezekiel 18 seems to indicate that the emphasis on individual responsibility also applies to the monarch monarchy of Judah. The house of David fell not because of the sins of past kings. Josiah was righteous, but because of the sins of the kings during the time leading up to the exile. The pronouncement of this rejection in the form of the funeral lament suggests that the house of David had been overwhelmed by the powers of death. The mother in this allegory is the nation of Israel who had produced the kings of the nation. So I guess it's I guess lamentation is all is also like a song that they sing. Um but I, I know it's uh, for mourning also, like like they're having a funeral. See, it says uh, Ezekiel used the vine metaphor with reference to the decline and fall of Judah, but this imagery of the vine typifies the nation of Israel as a whole. The combination of lion and vine may be derived from Genesis 49, 9-11. And then there's so much more uh, in the commentary uh, about the lion and the fruit. You know, I have to read the commentaries when it comes to uh, the lamentations and the proverbs and the riddles and things like that uh, for for it to make sense to me. <laughs> Amen. All right. So let's read Ezekiel 20. <clears throat> and definitely make comments. Make comments on what we are reading. All right, so chapter 20. And it came to pass in the seventh year and in the fifth month, the tenth day of the month, that certain of the elders of Israel came to inquire of the Lord and sat before me. 
Then came the word of the Lord unto me, saying, Son of man, speak unto the elders of Israel and say unto them, Thus said the Lord God, Are ye come to inquire of me? As I live, said the Lord God, I will not be inquired of by you. Wilt thou judge them, <clears throat> son of man? Wilt thou judge them? Cause them to know the abominations of their fathers. And say unto them, Thus said the Lord God, <clears throat> In the day when I chose Israel and lifted up mine hand unto the seed of the house of Jacob and made myself known unto them in the land of Egypt, when I lifted up mine hand unto them, saying, I am the Lord your God. In the day that I lifted up mine hand unto them to bring them forth of the land of Egypt into a land that I had espied for them, flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands. Then said I unto them, Cast ye away every man the abomination of his eyes, and defile not yourselves with the idols of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. But they rebelled against me, and would not hearken unto me. They did not every man cast away the abomination of their eyes, neither did they forsake the idols of Egypt. Then I said, I will pour out my fury upon them to accomplish my anger against them in the midst of the land of Egypt. But I wrought for my name's sake that it should not be polluted before the heathen among whom they were in whose sight I made myself known unto them and bringing them forth out of the land of Egypt. Wherefore, I caused them to go forth out of the land of Egypt and brought them into the wilderness. I'm going to pause right there. It's, it's like God is saying in verse nine, he's saying, but I wrought for my name's sake that I that it should not be polluted before the heathen. So it's like he's saying, I'm not fixing to stoop down to your level. I'm not fixing to come out of character because of your disobedience. I'm not about to come out of character because of your disobedience. I'm not. He's saying because because the heathen is watching as well. Everybody is watching. And I came. He said, I came to you and said, I'm going to be your God. He extended his hand out. He said, I'm going to give you a land with milk flowing with milk and honey. And, and, and you rebelled against me. He said, but, but for my name's sake, I'm not fixing to, 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 to come down to. I'm not fixing to come out of my character. He said it, that it should not be polluted before the heathen because everyone, everyone's eyes are watch, they're, they're watching all over the world. You know, they're watching. So that, that that is, you know, and we say that a lot, you know, we say that a lot, you know, don't don't let people bring you out of your care. Don't let people bring you out of your character. You know, don't let people make you stoop to their level. You know, it don't 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 allow people to come in and, and, and make you act other ways than what you are. You know, you are a kingdom citizen. And, and you you have the attributes and the characteristics of Father God, you know. So for His name's sake, when when people are being the way they are, for His name's sake, you know, don't let them bring you out of your character because they're they're watching, they're watching, and that's exactly what the enemy wants you to do. He wants you to sit there and slip up one time. You know, he wants you to slip up one time to make God look bad. You know? All right, so Ezekiel 20, verse 10. No, verse 11. All 
All right, Ezekiel, Ezekiel 20, verse 11. And I gave them my statutes and showed them my judgments, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. Moreover, I also gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between me and them that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctified them. But the house of Israel rebelled against me in the wilderness. They walked not in my statues, and they despised my judgments, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. And in my Sabbath they greatly polluted then, I said, I will pour out my fury upon them in the wilderness to consume them. But I wrought for my name's sake, that it should not be polluted before the heathen, in whose sight I brought them out. So here he is again saying, it was me that came to Egypt and brought you out. So the heathen is watching. It was me that came and extended my hand and freed you from the land of Egypt. So he said, the heathen is watching. He, he said, in their sight, they saw me bring you out. He said, so for my name's sake, I'm, I'm not fixing, I'm not fixing to uh, come out of my character, you know, I'm not about to, I'm not about to do it, you know, he, he many, many times w when we remember in the Old Testament, especially when they first made that calf, that golden calf, he want, he wanted to destroy all of them right then and there. And Moses stood in the gap between the people and God and Moses said father god you, you do remember the promises you made to abraham and, and and jacob you know and so and and we we get in those positions you know we get in those positions where somebody will come along and make us so angry but we have to we have to we have to collect ourselves and we have to remember who you are when when they when they make you angry, do not sin. When they make you angry, don't 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 let them don't let them see it. Like collect yourself and say, "Okay, Father God, what you want me to do now? <laughs> what you what what you want me to do about this situation?" You know, and just go to the Father and and, and say, "Father, I need you to take care of that." <laughs> you know, and just collect yourself. All right, so verse 15. You know, you know what I'm really, really loving about this? What I'm really, really loving about this is that we are really getting to learn and truly understand that a lot of our emotions and things like that come from the Father. Like he he has emotions and feelings and and an actual heart, like and and everything. Like when when in Genesis when he says, "Let us make man out of our image," like for real, you know. That's what I'm really really loving. Like how much of the father that I, his characteristics, his attributes, a lot of things. You know, the feelings and emotions and things that I have had come from him, you know, and, 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 and le learning that by reading. And even here, you know, he's he's even saying to himself, he's even saying himself for my name's sake. I'm not fixing to pollute before the heathen. I'm not fixing to do it. You know, and, and it's like, and that's what he's teaching us how to be able to, you know, we have the emotions, we have the feelings, we have all these things that are going on inside of us. And he understands more than we ever thought that he would ever understand because these feelings and these emotions come from him. He knows, you know, 
and that's what I'm really, really loving that the, the, the getting to know him, the relationship, the, the development of the relationship. It's like, wow, that's why that's why, you know, I would feel certain ways and and, and, and the emotions that that I would go through. And, and and to know that he he really 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 understands he really truly understands but he he even himself is saying you don't have to waste your energy on all of that just sit back relax he said i got you you know, that's why he set up everything. He he already prepared and set up everything, all the solutions that, to every problem we will ever face. Everything is because he understands, you know. That's what I'm loving about it. That's that's what I'm loving about getting into this word, into the Old Testament. You know, there 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 are times throughout my life, you know, I would you know dibble, dibble and dabble in the old testament i'm i'm really a new testament person like new testament i would read all the time new testament i i think i've read every single book in the new testament at least three times over but i would dibble and dabble in the old testament and so getting into this word every single day has really been just uh, an increase of learning of who Father God is. And it's just been amazing to me because it's like when he said, let us make man in our image, he really did make us in his image down to the attributes, the characteristics, everything like I, and that's what that's that's what I'm loving about this. You know, that's what I'm loving about this. And it's like. It's helping me to get him like I understand him like I get you God like I understand you know I understand why you know because for years people are always asking the questions why does God let this happen and why does God let that happen and and it's in the Bible it's right here you know all you got to do is actually take the time and read the Old Testament and you'll find out why, you know? <laughs> All right, so Ezekiel, good morning. If you are just coming on, we are in Ezekiel 20, verse 15. Ezekiel 20, verse 15. It says, yet also I lifted up my hand unto them in the wilderness that I would not bring them into the land which I had given them, flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands. Because they despised my judgments and walked not in my statutes, but polluted my Sabbaths, for their heart went after their idols. Nevertheless, mine eyes spared them from destroying them. Neither did I make an end of them in the wilderness. Excuse me. But I said unto their children in the wilderness, Walk ye not in the statues of your fathers, neither observe their judgments, nor defile yourselves with their idols. I am the Lord your God, Walk in my statutes and keep my judgments and do them and hollow my Sabbaths and they shall be a sign between me and you that ye may know that I am the Lord your God. Notwithstanding, the children rebelled against me. They walked not in my statutes, neither kept my judgments to do them, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. They polluted my Sabbaths. Then I said, I would pour out my fury upon them to accomplish my anger against them in the wilderness. Nevertheless, I withdrew my hand and wrought for my name's sake that it should not be polluted in the sight of the heathen in whose sight 
I brought them forth. Listen, how many times have you been in a position where somebody came and did something so wrong to you and, and, and you have the opportunity in the moment to, to just take revenge on them and God tells you, no, don't do it. Because even he himself is saying, I could have taken you out. <laughs> But I held my hand back. He said, I could have just wiped all of you out. Just, just got rid of everything. But he's saying, I held my hand back. He said, I held, I held my hand back. So even the punish, he's even saying, even the punishments that he did put out there, even the ones that he did get rid of, he's still saying, I, I, I showed you mercy and I held my hand back because the heathen is watching and I'm not about to pollute my own name. God is saying, I'm not about to pollute my own name. So how many times have you been in a position where you you so angry and, and you just want to lash out on that person? But God tells you, no, don't. Don't do it. He don't want you to pollute your name. He don't want you to have a bad name. He don't want you to pollute your name. Like, look, look at that. Like that, that right there. Like, whoa, <laughs> many, many times that I, I look back. He, he didn't want you to pollute your name. So. It, 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 God is so merciful and loving. I mean, like th to read this is just awesome and amazing. Don't don't let nobody come along and make you pollute your name. Like I, I'm hearing that loud and clear. I'm hearing it loud and clear. Don't let no one make you pollute your name. Because, see, you represent him. You are a kingdom citizen and you represent him. And if you pollute your name, you're polluting his name. Because when, when the enemy looks at you, guess who he sees? He sees Father God. When, 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 the, when, when the evil and the wicked see your face, they see Father God. Because we are clearly, literally in the image of the Father. We have his attributes, his characteristics and everything. So don't don't let nobody come along and make you so angry that you end up acting out in ways that is not of the father. Because even the father said, I was angry enough that I could have just wiped you out. And he said, I withdrew my hand for my name's sake. That it should not be polluted in the sight of the heathen. In whose sight I brought them forth. So if if God is saying I held my hand back, like he don't want you to pollute your name. If you pollute your name, and that's why, that's why right now we got so many people talking bad about Christians because there's so many people that have polluted their name and they've polluted, they've polluted the church house and they've polluted all these places. And so now we got people walking around talking about they have church hurt and, and those Christians are the most hypocritical people on the planet and, you know, and things like that. So we, we, we want to, we want to correct this. We want to, we, okay. So we, we kingdom citizens, we want to correct this. Like, no, you know, people are watching. People are watching. They're watching you every single day. And you have to understand this and know this, that they are watching. And you can't be one of those people that, that are on Facebook uh saying bad things profanity and and, and things that you on you on social media because something happened to you and now you cursing and and things like that people are watching just for that reason just to see 
you know so you 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 claim the name of the Lord Jesus Christ you have to act like it you claim the name of the Lord Jesus Christ you have to be like it you claim the name of the Lord Jesus Christ you have to talk like it walk talk act think you know and you got to you got to be ready you got to be ready for when the enemy is coming at you just just to take you one slip and people are watching they they watching just for that slip they watching for you to slip they watching for you to kind of stumble a little bit and and, and and it won't matter if you picked yourself back up because they going they going blast that one slip all over the place oh my did you see what she did oh my goodness do you see how she acted i mean they gonna blast it all over so you don't want you do not want to be one that causes pollution to the to the to the name of the lord jesus christ All right, so Ezekiel 20, verse 23. Man, this is good. I, I, I'm loving this. <laughs> this, is, this is really good. For me, this is like God is really pouring out his heart. God, it, in this chapter, God is pouring out his heart. And he's really expressing... And, and and saying, I I was physically I I'm, I I wanted to give you the best land on the planet, you know. I wanted I wanted to be your God, and I want I want to do I want to be able to do all these things for you. And and he's pouring his heart out, you know. All right, so verse twenty three. I lifted up mine hand unto them also in the wilderness that I would scatter them among the heathen and disperse them through the countries because they had not executed my judgments but had despised my statutes and had polluted my Sabbaths and their eyes were after their father's idols. Wherefore I gave them also statutes that were not good and judgments whereby they should not live. And I polluted them in their own gifts and that they caused to pass through the fire all that opened the womb that I might make them desolate to the end that they might know that I am the Lord. Therefore, son of man, speak unto the house of Israel and say unto them, thus said the Lord God. Yet in this your fathers have blasphemed me, in that they have committed a trespass against me. For when I have brought them into the land, for the which I lifted up mine hand to give it to them, then they saw every high hill and all the thick trees, and they offered their sacrifices, and there they presented the provocation of their offering. There also they made their sweet savior and poured out their, their drink offerings. Then I said unto them, what is the high place where unto ye go? And the name thereof is called Bama until this day. Wherefore say unto the house of Israel, thus said the Lord God, are ye polluted after the manner of your fathers? And commit ye whoredom after their abominations. For when ye offer your gifts, when ye make your sons to pass through the fire, ye pollute yourselves with all your idols, even unto this day. And shall I be inquired of by you, O house of Israel? As I live, saith the Lord God, I will not be inquired of by you. And that which cometh into your mind shall not be at all that ye say. We will be as the heathen, as the families of the countries to serve wood and stone. 
So fa- Father God is like, I'm not fixing that. You you can't come to me asking me anything after all of that that you did to me. He's like, I I I kept my hand back. I didn't destroy you. I let you live. No, you can't come ask me any questions. <laughs> you can't come and pray to me. You know, he said he's letting them know. No, no. Right now, mm-mm. You know, he he he's like, no. I'm I'm not gonna even hear you. <laughs> and and parents, parents, we understand this. You really have to know that we understand this. As a parent. How many times have your child made you so mad and so angry that they come and they start asking these questions and things like that and they're and they're seeking your love and coming to you and, and you look at them and be like, Go go back to your room. Just just go to your room. And you don't you don't even want to hear what they gotta say because you're that mad. And and you have to you have to sit back and breathe for a second and say Oh, Lord, you know, how many times parents have you had to do that? And and, and you say, uh-uh, don't don't even don't even come to me right now. I, I don't even want to hear what you got to say right now. You know, it's like so we, we understand this. And this is this this is what Father God is doing. He's saying, mm mm, no. Go back, go, go back to your room. I, I don't even want to hear what you got to say right now. <laughs> All right, so Ezekiel 20, verse 33 says, As I live, saith the Lord God, surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out will I rule over you. And I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out of the countries wherein you are scattered with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out. I will bring you into the wilderness of the people and there will I plead with you face to face. Do y'all see this? Glory, glory to the Lord. So right now he's he's speak he's speaking to Ezekiel, okay? He's having a conversation with Ezekiel and he's telling Ezekiel what to tell the people. And he's saying, I'm going to gather you all together, bring you back to the wilderness, and I'm gonna come to you face to face, my me and you, and plead with you. Like, how merciful is that? He says in verse 36, Like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so will I plead with you, said the Lord God. Excuse me. I'm like, For me, God only had to just speak one word, salvation. Like for me, all you had, all he had to do was just, he did not have to beg. He didn't have to, I mean, he, he is saying, I'm going to come and plead with you. I'm going to plead with you. Woo. Glory to God. Verse 37, and I will cause you to pass under the rod and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. So, you know, pass under the rod. That means you're going to get a whooping. (laughs) You're going to get a whooping. You're going to get punishment. But I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. He's going to plead with you. 
you know, and, and, and that's that's just like times where we sit our children down, you know, we sit our kids down and we have a conversation with them and explain to them, OK, this is what you did wrong. And this is this is why you're getting a whooping or this is why you're getting punishment. This is why you're getting time out, you know, and, and, and we, we we're sitting down, we sit with our children and, and we explain. And, and so this is Father God breaking it down to them and 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 giving them this is what you did this is what you did and so now I'm going to come to you face to face and I'm going to plead with you but you're going to pass the rod you're going to you're going to get punished so verse 38 and I will purge out from among you the rebels and them that transgress against me I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn and they shall not enter into the land of Israel and ye shall know that I am the Lord. As for you, O house of Israel, thus said the Lord God, go ye, serve ye every one of his idols and hereafter also. If ye will not hearken unto me, but pollute ye my holy name no more with your gifts and with your idols. For in mine holy mountain, in the mountain of the height of Israel, saith the Lord God, there shall all the house of Israel, all of them in the land, serve me. There will I accept them. And there will I require your offerings and the first fruits of your oblations with all your holy things. I will accept you with your sweet savior when I bring you out from the people and gather you out of the countries wherein ye have been scattered. And I will be sanctified in you before the heathen. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I shall bring you into the land of Israel and to the country for the which I lifted up mine hand to give it to your fathers. And there shall ye remember your ways and all your doings wherein ye have been defiled and ye shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for all your evils that ye have committed. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have wrought with you for my name's sake, not according to your wicked ways, nor according to your corrupt doings, O ye house of Israel, saith the Lord God. Ooh, glory to God. It says, moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face toward the south, and drop thy word toward the south and prophesy against the forests of the south field and say to the forest of the south, hear the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord God, behold, I will kindle a fire in thee and it shall devour every green tree in thee and every dry tree. The flaming flame shall not be quenched and all faces from the south to the north shall be burned therein and all flesh shall, shall see that I the Lord have kindled it it shall not be quenched then said I our Lord God they say of me doth he not speak parables you know those last scriptures make me think of the fires that are you know that are happening you know, all over the world, they don't, they don't even know how they're like the natural disaster. They call them natural disasters. Next thing you know it, there's a, there's a whole place just burning and, and, and they're trying to put the fire out, but then they can't, you know, that's what that, that, that's what that just made me think of. You know, we, we, we got to really, really start being aware and notice, you know, like, God uses the earth. The earth responds to the presence of God. And, and, and when, when what we call natural disasters, 
that's Father God. <laughs> you know, the world want to try to call them natural disasters. They don't. They don't. They don't want to. They don't want to recognize the Father when the presence of the Father is up on this earth. You know, and that's what that made me think of. You know, that he he causes fire. Uh, in the forests and in 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 the desolate places and things like next thing you know it there's a fire and things like that or or even the floods and storms and and think I mean that's the presence of God coming on this on this planet and that's what that made me think of j just now you know we call them natural disasters. I say that's the presence of the Lord God Almighty, and 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 uh, y'all need to wake up, <laughs> you know, w wake up and be aware. That that was very refreshing for me, j just reading that uh, Ezekiel nineteen and twenty. That was that was very refreshing for me because, you know. Learning who the father is also explains who you are. You know, as a kingdom citizen, you a kingdom citizen, you are called child of God. Learning who he is and, and developing your relationship with him also helps you to understand yourself even better. And and and, and that's what this is doing for me. It it is it's helping me to understand me even more. You know, who I am in Christ Jesus, you know. And so that 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 was refreshing for me. That was really refreshing. All right. So good morning. If you are just coming on, we're moving on to Hebrews 11. We're going to read verses one through twenty two. Amen. Hebrews 11. 1 through 22. All right, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We all know this scripture. We all know this scripture, but do we really, really understand it? Faith, you know, when it says walk by faith, not by sight. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. This is what we're believing for. We're hoping that the Lord God is going to come in and save the day. We're hoping because we don't see it. We, we're not seeing it. It's the evidence of things not seen. So we so when we when when it says walk by faith and not by sight that means he he literally do not want you to use your physical eyes. He really don't want you to look at the circumstances and the situations that you're in. He is really asking you to to trust in him, take a hold of his hand, a hand that normally you cannot see. And, and let him guide you, you know, to have faith in him. So we hope we have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. See, like I said the other day, we are the remnant that doesn't actually get to see Jesus. We have faith. We walk by, we walk by faith, not by sight. So we don't physically see him. We we hope, we know, we believe. And so now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So for, for by it, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. See through faith. Because we didn't see it. We didn't physically see it. 
through faith, we come to an understanding that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. Now, before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him so you so faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen so we are the people of God the ones after Jesus Christ See, we didn't we didn't get to we didn't get to walk with him like the disciples did. We didn't get to learn from him like the disciples did. They actually physically saw him and and then they they actually physically watched him die. Then physically watched him rise and then they actually watched him go home. You know? So we we walk by faith and believe. And so that's why it says, but without that faith, it is impossible to believe, to, to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe. You have to believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So you, 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 every day you are seeking to see God, seeking to see his face. Every day when you wake up, you're seeking to hear his voice. You're seeking any evidence every single day of, of the presence of God in your life. So verse seven, by faith, Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. And so that's some, that's some true testament of faith. Here you got, you got God coming to you, telling you, okay, I need you to build a boat this 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 long this wide i need you to i need you to build this boat because i'm about to flood the earth and you're the only one that god tells this to and now you got to build it you got to believe that god is telling it to you and then you got to believe that if you build this boat that you and your family and every two of each animal and creature and all of that is going to be saved. And you got to believe that he's going to create this flood. And so he, Noah was mocked. Noah was mocked. Noah was made fun of. I'm sure even his family was like, this crazy old man. But he did it. He, uh, he heard the voice of the Lord. He did it. He obeyed. And therefore, him and his family and the animals were saved. All right, so verse 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed and he went out, not knowing whether whither he went by faith 
He sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there, therefore sprang there even of one and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude. And as the sand, which is by the sea shore innumerable. Says verse 13, these all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them, embraced them, and confess that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they, <clears throat> for they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country, that is, and heavenly, wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning upon the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. So can you hear what the Lord is saying right now? Can you hear what the Lord is saying right now? There's a lot of things, promises, that are made to you things that God said he's going to do and right now in our in our physical eyes we can't see these promises unfolding not yet so right now what is God saying to you he's saying believe me believe in me have faith no you can't see me you can't see what I'm getting ready to do. You can't see the blessings and the favor that I'm about to pour on you like rain. But believe me. He says, I, he says, those who diligently seek me. He's going to reward. He, he is going to the rewards are there and coming for some of us. It's right there at our door. You know, and he's saying, be patient and believe in me. Have faith. Continue to walk by faith and not by sight. Don't look, don't look at the fact that your bills are stacked to the ceiling. Don't look at the fact that you barely, you barely can keep food in the refrigerator. Don't look at the, don't look at the fact that, you know, uh, your car broke down and now you ain't got no transportation. Like when these things happen, it's to distract you. Okay. 
when these things happen it is to try to bring you out of character you know but some of these things happen God allows these things to happen to not only test you but strengthen you to to show you I'm right here you know he he when 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 you get a flat tire and then all of a sudden that good samaritan stop and say hey let me help you out I, re- I, re- I remember i was at a gas station and this is a, this is a testimony this was a good samaritan act uh for me i had to scrounge up some change to be able to put gas in the car and i had all this change uh i was at the gas station and um i was i was counting out the change um to the cashier and i think i was close to like five dollars about five dollars to put gas in my car so as i'm putting gas i I come out i'm putting gas in my car and then this stranger this man out of nowhere he comes out of the gas station and he yells out and looks at me he says hey and I look up at him and he's like, do you want more gas? And I was like, yeah, sure. And he was like, all right. And he and he he gives he gives the cashier 10 more dollars for me to be able to put in my tank. Those are those good Samaritan moments. Those are those moments where God comes in and shows you I, I, I'm right here. I'm taking care of you. I, I, I'm not I'm not. You know, uh, I'm not going to just let you, you know, try to do this all by yourself. You know, those are those good Samaritan moments. And in those moments, you also want to like you want to you want you want that to be something that's in your heart for when you have something and then next thing you know you see somebody that needs then you give you know and you're supposed to pass it on and and t- this man didn't know me from nowhere he did not know me from nowhere and and he was like hey do you want more gas i was like thank you and every time this happens whenever god sends me a good samaritan whenever he sends me one i always ask them What's your name so I can pray for you? And do you know every single time they tell me, no, just give God the glory. They won't even tell me their name. They, every single time. And many, many times have God sent a good Samaritan in my life and, and uh, you know, showed, showed up and showed out and, and let me know I, I'm right. He, I'm right here. I'm I'm right here with you, you know. So you you got to believe. You you have to believe, and you have to push through, and you have to have patience for him. We're always praying that he has patience for us. So have patience for him, you know, and and know that he is coming with rewards for those who diligently seek him. Every morning we come on at 530, we're diligently seeking him. We're getting to know him. He's increasing us in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. You know, we're developing our relationship with him every single day. And and, and that's, that's what, you know, those are the steps that we know we can take to diligently seek him. And so you want to seek the kingdom of heaven first above all things every single day. If there's if there's nothing else that you can learn is is learn that, you know, like go to him every single day, every morning that you wake up, you know, give him a praise and worship of thankfulness, you know, be grateful, you know, no matter no matter what situation you are in. You know, I had to experience homelessness for like two weeks. It was literally two weeks. I was living in the shed of of of, of a neighbor's house. I, I I literally I was I was it, it's a whole t- 
testimony, a long testimony. But do you know, I thank the Lord God for that shit (laughs) because I had a job. I just didn't have transportation. The situation that I was in was really, really bad. And how I ended up in the situation is I was actually trying to be a good Samaritan to someone else. I was I was literally uh, extending my hand out to help someone else. And and you know what? God is bringing this back to me because, you know, when I first started this video, I was saying how there are some people out there God is giving an assignment to. And, and then they're taking it, they're taking the assignment, and then they're taking things in the matters of their own hands. And that, that was this case. I knew that I was supposed to help people. I was very young. I was still in my 20s. I knew that I was supposed to help people. But I took matters into my own hands in the way that I thought I was supposed to help them. And, and God was like, I, I did not tell you to help them like that. That's not how that's not how I want you to help people. You know, that's not how I want you to be there for people. And I I let some people come in, uh, gave them a place to stay in my own house and everything fell apart. (laughs) So I ended up I ended up in the shed of a neighbor's backyard and it was in the middle of July, hot summer no shower, no nothing because I needed to still be able to walk to work because I didn't even have no transportation. And you know, I praise God for these moments because that neighbor could have told me no. That neighbor could have told me, no, you ain't sleeping in my shed. But I went to the neighbor. I asked him, I said, please. I said, can I sleep in your shed so that way I can be able to walk to work and they and they told me, yeah. A lot of people would not see that as a blessing, but it was a blessing. It was a blessing like I was not expecting. Them neighbors did not know me. <laughs> they didn't know who I was. I didn't know them. But I literally I heard the Lord God and I went and I asked them, can I sleep in your shed? So for two weeks, I was homeless. I had no I had no place to stay. And um I I I look at those little moments throughout life, you know? I look at those little moments and I and I count it as a blessing. Those are moments I know God was there. Those are moments when 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 I'm at work and one of the employees find out that I'm sleeping in this shed. And this employee didn't even this this coworker did not even know who I was. I was I was kind of brand new. I was I was working at a Baskin Robbins at the time. And she handed me the keys to her truck. And she said, "Go find you a place to stay." She didn't know me. She didn't know if I was going to take off with her truck. She didn't know nothing about me. And yet she handed me her keys and said, go find you a place to stay. These are moments. This is this is how come no one cannot. No one can come along and tell me God ain't real. Because, see, I have these I have these life experiences where God showed up. And even if it's the little blessings, God showed up. He he. He put it in her heart to give me her keys to her truck. And she didn't even know she didn't even know me. And we became friends after that. And 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 thing I mean it's like it's the little things that 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 God comes in and he shows the evidence of who he is in your life. He's right there taking care of you. And he's always sending good Samaritans always you got good samaritans coming in and out of your life all the time and a lot of time a lot of times you you don't even see it you don't even recognize it because you're looking for the big stuff 
You look you're looking for the big boom blessings when God sent a when God sent a good Samaritan in your life and 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 they gave you they gave you a a, a blessing that's that's God, you know? So have faith in him. Have faith, patience, and and just believe. Believe. The rewards are there and they're coming. They're right there. You know? Don't be anxious. You know? Don't be anxious and don't grieve the spirit. God is right there and taking care of you no matter what. And don't let nobody make you come out of your character. <laughs> Amen. All right. So, uh, this was short, sweet, but powerful. Um, if you are just coming on, we read Ezekiel 19 and 20 this morning, and then Hebrews 11 verses 1 through 22. So definitely go back and read that, uh, and, and, and really meditate and, uh, and, and just really sit in the presence of the Lord and, uh, Train your ears to hear his voice and, tra- and, and and allow yourself to wait on him. Wait on him. God is making moves that he he is going to get the glory out of anything. Anything when it comes to your life. So you got to wait on him because just like in the sight of the heathen, he said, I'm not going to pollute my name. Believe me. So he's going to keep the promises that he has made to you. He's going to keep the promises and he's going to be the God that he say he is in your life. So you got to believe it and, and, and hold on to that. Amen. All right. So if no one else has anything else to say, any comments, Good morning to you all, beautiful kingdom citizens. Continue to come on every morning. We're, we're getting through the Bible in one entire year. Um, and uh, we're, we're really getting to know the Father uh, and developing our relationship with Him. I've been increased m- many times over reading this word. Increased in everything. So... Continue to come on, share, invite others, and um, and just be blessed in the word, you know? The word is life. The word of God is life. And, and, it, and it also keeps us alive, you know? All right, so no one else has anything to say. You know that I love you all. Excuse me. I love you all so very much. And I pray for you. I pray for you all. Pray for me. Keep me in your prayers. And um, again, if anybody needs to reach out, if you if you need uh, to to make contact and, and, and pray, pray, you want me to stand in agreement and pray with you and things like that. Um definitely definitely reach out and um yeah so i love you all and you all have a wonderful awesome beautiful blessed day on purpose and i will see you 5 30 in the morning